Welcome everybody to another video of Vinyl Attic. This is Chili and today's vinyl pick I have is Weezer's 1996 album Pinkerton and it's a nice beautiful lo-fi um, edition uh, and so before I get into this please don't forget to hit the like button, comment on this video, share this video and if you still haven't please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for updates. Okay so with that out of the way now, when this album was released in September of 1996, it was panned by critics. Rolling Stone magazine said it was the third worst album of 1996. Uh, they were saying that the production by Weezer themselves was horrible. And, you know, it wasn't compared to their first debut album, which is now just called The Blue Album. And it had all these singles on there. Um, this one failed to to match that uh, success. And I don't know about, you know, as far as uh, matching success, as far as just like the sound of it. But as someone like Rivers Cuomo, who had a vision for this album, it is darker and it's a lot more heavier. There's a lot more feedback on here, which critics didn't like about it. I thought it was uh, this album was way better than the first one, and they were also citing that this was mean and the lyrics were sexist. And it took some time for this album to come around and uh, get the uh, from cult status to like you know um, acknowledge as one of the greatest rock albums ever uh, from the '90s. Now, side one, tired of sex, get you, no other one, why bother, across the sea, perfect album side. And the songs are really kind of short too, and, and they're very punchy. The drums on here, Patrick Wilson's playing is amazing. I mean, this, the first song on side two, The Good Life, El Scorcho, great playing. I mean, their, their riffs on here too, the riffs on here are just driving and they just really kick ass and just like puts that first album to shame um pink triangle it has a couple of songs like pink triangle and falling for you which were they have some kind of like pop sensibility to it but then it ends with butterfly just a nice acoustic kind of melancholy type song which is a great album closer but the whole album itself it just fucking kicks ass it rocks you know and um I don't know why it, it, it became the album it did and didn't, um, wasn't really received well when it came out. However, uh, because of the, uh, the critics talking crap about it and everything, Rivers Cuomo uh, felt that at the time, he said, I guess uh, I, I'm not a very good songwriter. And the band broke up. They would reconnect in 2001. You know, and between that time from 96 and, and 2001, when they were kind of on hiatus, there was a whole slew of bands that were listening to this album. Jimmy Eat World, Dashboard Confessional, all these bands were citing this as a reason why they played music. And I guess if you want to go back and go, well, who's responsible for emo music? I guess it would have to be Weezer in some weird sense, you know, they're part of this, you know, um, not, and he doesn't really whine, um, like later emo type of bands, but he, he was screaming a lot. There's, uh, I do like the, like the abrasive drums on here. And, uh, but however, that's what this album became. It became like this pillar of, uh, um, as far as new bands were coming in as the album that they were citing as the reason for why they play music. And then so when they came back in 2001, they did kind of play it safe with the Green album. And they did, you know, get uh, Rick Ocasek, who produced the first album, to produce their comeback album. And they did have some successful songs on there, Hash Pipe, Island in the Sun, and... Um, they kind of just picked up from where they left off from the first album and, and like this album was like non-existent. However, they do now play some of these songs, of course, still on on the road. 
and they, they, they play like Pink Triangle and uh, The Good Life. It's been played, you know, so they haven't really just discarded this album. I think they kind of hold this album uh, dear to their heart, you know, they, they have mentioned that the album is good after all, you know, and I do, I always felt like it was a good album. It was just like one of these um, misfortunes, you know, just like how somebody could say something, some stupid magazine, and um, there you go, and everyone just kind of goes along with that narrative and saying it's a horrible album when it really wasn't. And because it was more accepted by bands and musicians and now that it's you know looked upon as just that yeah it is a great album no hits on here they're singles but they did you know they didn't chart but however you know uh, mofi did put together this um edition and it's well deserved and it sounds really good on here and uh, i suggest if you haven't heard it and if you're going to hear this album, hear it in this format, in this issue, uh, reissue from um, MoFi. Now, leave me a comment below. What are your thoughts on Weezer's second album? Did it take time for, for people to come around and say, yes, it is a great album? No. Did you feel it was great from, from the gate? Like I felt it was great. Now, leave me a comment below. And with that, I'll shut up and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.